Hello friends, hope you guys are having an amazing day. Happy Monday, hope you guys had an amazing weekend. Um, okay, so let's jump right into our study. Um, we left off at chapter six, which uh, we talked about heart idolatry. Um, and then I took a little pause on that last week um, and I went over just a few pages from um, Instruments in the Hands of the Redeemer, the book that Oscar and I are going through. Um, and just a few little uh, paragraphs that um, talk about heart idolatry. Um, and I thought it was interesting, so I shared it with you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. But now we're going to continue with our book, The Gospel-Centered Life, and we are jumping into chapter seven. Um, and right before each um, chapter, they give you like a mission of what we're gonna do, what the big idea of this chapter is about. So let's jump right into that. The gospel is simultaneously at work in us and through us. Inwardly, our desires and motives are being changed as we, as we repent and believe the gospel. As we experience Christ's love in this way, we are compelled to engage those around us with the same kind of redemptive love. God's grace brings renewal everywhere in us and through us. So again, the work starts in our hearts, inwardly in our lives, and then the fruit we see outwardly, but it's something that is a given, something that must do if we are true followers of Christ, uh, to serve others, to tell others about this good news, not keeping it to ourselves. Um, I think it's interesting or how this is tied into the tree, the, the, the two greatest commandments, which are love your God with your heart, soul, mind, and also love your neighbor as yourself. These are things that are commanded to us because it is a fruit of having a relationship with God. You know, the Bible says if we know God, we love God. And if we love God, we want to serve um, our brothers and sisters. We want to serve others to be that vessel of righteousness for them, to bring them to the feet of Jesus. So again, it's something that should ha happen naturally. It's a way for us to look at our lives and say, hey, am I serving others um, the way that God calls us to and the way that I should if I'm a Christian? Not so we can say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and serve others. No, no, but that should be just a mirror to be able to see what, what, where it is that I need to focus um, yeah my my uh, my oh, my problems where I need to focus um, what the hard issue is right and the hard issue is I need to fall more in love with Jesus am I really understanding the gospel um, to be able to um, to spread it to others so that is a big uh, big idea the mission for this chapter um, so chapter 7 the title is the gospel propels us outward okay and um, our passage is Galatians 5.13, and it says, For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. This, is, uh, this, uh, this passage was written by Paul. This book was written by Paul to the Galatians, to people who were followers of Christ. These, I love how it says, brothers, meaning we are brothers in the faith. He's not talking to people who are not Christians, who are not following God, who have not professed to, um, to put all their hope in Jesus. These are people in the church who have already proclaimed this. And he's saying, even here, we, we are freed in the sense of we don't obey the law now for, um, for salvation. We do have that freedom. But let us make sure to not use this opportunity for the flesh. Okay, to be able to uh, to sin or to do things that are not according to what the Lord has called us to do. Um, I'm going to the book of Romans, the Roman Romans, and I am in chapter six, and even going through what I read, have read for the past couple of days. Um, it says that we are to we are called to use uh, our members, meaning our our our, our body, us, um, as instruments of righteousness. Okay, not instruments uh, of the flesh, because in there it says Paul starts off by saying that we have died to sin, um, and now we are alive to Christ, to God. So here he's talking to believers, right? Believers, don't use your members for instruments of flesh or to use them for in, for in the flesh, sorry, um, but for instruments uh, for righteousness. So even though we have come to Christ, there's still a lot of work that needs to happen in us, okay? And we still have opportunity there to live in the flesh. Um, that We have to choose to live for righteousness, okay? All right, it says, um, when we truly understand the depth and richness of the gospel, we naturally feel joy, delight, and freedom because of who Jesus is and what he has done for us. 
But as this verse teaches, it's possible to use even our freedom in Christ, right? As an opportunity for the flesh. Our sinful hearts can take the good benefits of the gospel and use them for selfish purposes. I see it. I do see it in people. I do see it in my brothers and sisters in Christ, but I see this mostly in myself. All right. Um, have I been, you know, instruments of uh, flesh and not righteousness? Um, absolutely. And I think that this is so convicting because we, once we come to Christ, we don't say, okay, that's it. No, the sanctifying work, that's when it starts. That's when the sanctifying works uh, begins. Okay. Nowhere in this more, sorry, nowhere is this more evident than in our tendency to make the gospel a private reality. When we hear words like transformation, renewal, or growth, we conceive of those benefits as being primarily personal and in, internal. My transformation, my growth, the gospel's renewal of my heart. And it's not that this is false. This is not false. Absolutely, that's where it starts. But it does not end there. Okay? Um, again, not just me, my transformation, but how is this being propelled outward? Uh, and the gospel is uh, personal and internal, but it's also much more than that. That's why we can't stay there. Um, a lot of times I, I notice this in baby Christians. It doesn't matter if they've been in the faith for a number of years. You can be in the faith for decades and not really grow, which is really sad. I've seen it. Um, and baby Christians where they think, oh, it's just for me. It's amazing. It's for me. No, 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 no. This should propel us to tell others to witness, to be a light of the gospel um, everywhere we go. Okay. When God's grace is working on us and in us, it will also work itself out through us. The internal renewal of our minds and hearts creates an external pro propulsion that moves us out in love and service to others. All right. And of course, this little book, the people who wrote this book love diagrams because we were talking about the gospel grid, you know, um, in the first couple of chapters. And yet they have another one, <laughs> which I love it because I'm a visual person to be able to, be able to see this. Um, so I'll kind of show you guys here, but I'll explain it more in depth. Uh, the is it zooming in the um how do you say it the words are kind of small so maybe you want to take a screenshot and then we'll uh, we'll go through it okay god's grace is the driving force of all change that charge reminds us that god's grace has both an inward and an outward movement that mirror each other okay Internally, the grace of God moves, moves me to see my sin, for me to respond in repentance and faith like we talked about in previous chapters, and then experience the joy of transformation. So it's a cycle that God's grace does in me, his child uh, should all the time. You know, if I am truly following him, I am aware, made aware of my sin. I repent. I have faith. I believe in his promises. I believe in the gospel, okay, that I have been forgiven. There's no condemnation in me. And then I experience a joy of transformation. That is what happens inwardly, God's grace, okay? Externally, the grace of God moves me to see opportunities for love and service respond in repentance and faith and experience joys as I see God work through me. So you see how I see my sin, I repent and have faith, and then I see the joy of transformation. Um, the opportunity to love and serve others, uh, I can see it more clearly uh, when I see sin in other people's lives, <laughs> primarily my kids, uh, and even my husband, obviously, because I live with him, but when I see their sin, my reaction shouldn't be condemning and saying, what? No, how can I serve you, right? Like when my kids make me mad and upset, I shared with you guys a story of Paul Tripp uh, and he was just, he went through like this day where he was tempted to just be so upset and he understood it was God's grace to him that all these things happened to him because now he had the opportunity to serve his family, right? So again, looking at those, when we see these things and people around us, God's grace should compel us to say, okay, I'm not going to let them get mad. I'm not going to let them get the best of me. I'm not going to be upset. Lord, this is a chance that you have shown me to serve them in love. Okay? So show them love. 
and hopefully in praying that they can repent, right? And they can put the trust in Christ and then seeing the joy of transformation in people's lives is amazing to know that you are being the tool for that, that God's doing it through the Holy Spirit, but through you is amazing, okay? In other words, the gospel is not just the answer to your internal sins, struggles, and heart idols, right? Primarily it is, but it's not just that. It is also the answer to your failure to love others, engage the culture, and live missionally. If the gospel is renewing you internally, it will also be propelling you externally. It must do so for it is the good news of the kingdom. That is just what it does. All right. Um, an example I can think of this is when somebody says that they're pregnant, right? Oh, I'm pregnant. I have a baby. I'm not pregnant. I'm just saying someone says they're pregnant. Um, and eventually the fruit of that is that you are going to see the belly growing. And obviously because the child is growing, you don't automatically assume that every woman who has a big belly is pregnant. You shouldn't. Um, but that is just an, an uh, result of what already of months and weeks of have, what has happened inside of her. A baby is growing. That's the fruit. So again, if the Lord, if God's grace is working in you um, internally, the result should be outwardly that people see this. Oh my goodness. Yes, there is a baby in there because her belly is big. Yes, she is a follower of Christ. I see fruit. She wants to serve others. Okay. And, sh and uh, spread the gospel. Um, okay, the kingdom of God is not personal and private. Jesus taught us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, which we see in Matthew 6, 10. When we pray for the coming of God's kingdom, we are praying both that Jesus will reign in the hearts of people internally and that his will will be done everywhere, just as it is in heaven, meaning externally. Okay, so we're going to stop right there. And we're going to finish off um, in our next video. And I love how they actually, they go into a specific example here um, and how that works. Okay. All right, guys, that's about it. Stay tuned for a few messages from myself. I love you all and I will see you in my next video, Lord willing. Bye. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos. It really does mean the world to me that you guys take the time to watch his videos. I really appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you very much. I have a few messages to share with you guys. They are not long at all, I promise. So number one, I accept prayer requests. Um, me and my family have a list that we pray for every single day. So if you want us to add you and your prayer requests to our list, just go ahead and message me. Either leave a comment below or contact me through any of the social uh, media platforms that I have and we will go ahead and add you to our prayer list. Number two, if you are on Instagram, you should totally be following me. Why? Because I post a lot more content there than I do here, obviously, on YouTube. I post pictures of my kids, recipes, and such. So if you are on there, go ahead and follow me. And number three, if you are not already part of this family, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. You can hit the subscription button below and the notification bell so that you can get notified every time I upload a new video. We have so much fun here in this channel. I share with you guys recipes, I do Bible studies, I do makeup reviews, I do vlogs, I do videos with my kids. So if you wanna go ahead and join our family, like I said, go ahead and subscribe. All right guys, that's about it. Have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.